Scientists just discovered a mysterious and isolated Neanderthal population in France. In the world of paleogenetics, few finds ignite as much curiosity as a well-preserved Neanderthal genome. One such treasure is the DNA of a French Neanderthal specimen known as Thorin, whose genetic code offers fresh insights into the ancient migration, isolation and interbreeding patterns of this close human cousin. Do you have Neanderthal DNA? This Neanderthal's DNA, distinct yet interlinked with other Neanderthal groups, opens a window to understanding the complex population dynamics of Neanderthals across Europe. We are going to investigate his lineage further and find out where his population likely comes from, what happened to them, and even whether you could be related to Thorin. Thorin's Neanderthal DNA, recently sequenced with stunning clarity, reveals that he belonged to a unique subpopulation, genetically isolated from other Neanderthal groups. This isolation appears to have stretched over 50 millennia, raising questions about how this group became so genetically distinct. Isolation in early human populations is often the result of geographic barriers, and researchers suggest that Thorin's group may have been separated by significant natural features, such as mountain ranges or glaciated valleys, which acted as formidable boundaries during colder periods. Interestingly, Thorin's genetic profile suggests his group shared some common ancestors with other Neanderthal groups, notably those from the Altai region in Siberia and populations in Eastern Europe. However, Thorin's line diverged from these groups thousands of years before the arrival of modern humans in Eurasia, maintaining a stable yet isolated existence in their region. Thorin's population is part of a larger picture of diversity within Neanderthals across the Pleistocene landscape. Research shows that unlike modern humans, who display a relatively uniform genetic spread due to more recent migrations and intermingling, Neanderthals evolved into regionally distinct groups. Each group adapted to local climates and regional challenges, leading to small but significant differences in their genetics and potentially their behaviours and physical characteristics. The Thorin group's genetic distance from Western European Neanderthals could indicate long-standing population splits and restricted movement between groups. This separation may explain some of the distinct features observed in their bones and tools, as well as unique DNA markers not found in other Neanderthals. This isolation would have reinforced their unique genetic traits, much like island populations today often display distinct adaptations to their environments. Thorin's group displayed physical traits that aligned them with other archaic Neanderthals, emphasizing traits honed over thousands of years in challenging environments. Archaic Neanderthal morphology involved a robust frame, powerful muscles, and adaptations for high mobility and cold weather endurance. For example, their large nasal passages would have helped warm the cold air as they inhaled, an adaptation seen across colder Neanderthal populations. This distinctive morphology, preserved through isolation, suggests that Thorin's people retained features more typical of earlier Neanderthal populations. Their isolation likely meant less gene flow from other Neanderthal groups, reinforcing a unique genetic profile that became even more distinct over time. In contrast, other European Neanderthals were experiencing frequent interactions, potentially even with other early human groups, which might have accelerated evolutionary changes that Thorin's lineage did not experience. This further supports the idea that isolated populations like Thorin's could have retained ancient genetic traits and cultural practices that were phased out or transformed in European groups over time. In essence, while all Neanderthals share a common ancestry, Thorin's group represents a more archaic branch of the Neanderthal family tree. Their isolation preserved older genetic and possibly physical characteristics that Western European Neanderthals gradually lost due to environmental changes, migration, and later interbreeding with Homo sapiens. Thorin's DNA suggests that his Neanderthal lineage was one of the last isolated populations in Europe. While Western Neanderthal groups evolved and mingled with neighboring groups over time, Thorin's ancestors remained in their secluded regions perhaps in the mountainous and forested areas of Central Europe. This isolation preserved a genetic distinctiveness that even among Neanderthals might have seemed archaic. 
Thorin's lineage was characterized by specific DNA markers that highlighted its ancient roots and separation from other, more interconnected populations. What makes Thorin's DNA particularly intriguing is its close relationship with the Vindija cave Neanderthals, found in modern-day Croatia, 500 miles to the east of Grotta Mandrin. Vindija cave offers a unique perspective on the Central European Neanderthals of the late Pleistocene. Vindija's Neanderthals are known for their distinctive morphology, and they share some of the most unique aspects of Neanderthal adaptation. Thorin's genetic makeup connects him closely with these Balkan Neanderthals, who lived a life marked by the challenges of the Ice Age environment, with bodies and cultural practices tuned to survival in harsher, colder climates. The Vindija Neanderthals, from a cave site in Croatia, are one of the most well-preserved sources of Neanderthal DNA and provide critical insights into the genetic profile of Central European Neanderthals. Thorin's genetic connection to these Neanderthals offers a fascinating glimpse into a branch of the Neanderthal family tree that existed in relative isolation, yet maintained ties to broader Neanderthal populations. Vindija Cave, nestled in the forested mountains of Croatia, served as a long-term refuge for Neanderthals approximately 40,000 years ago, near the time when modern humans were entering Europe. The cave's conditions preserved an incredible array of Neanderthal remains and artifacts, allowing researchers to sequence some of the most intact Neanderthal genomes ever recovered. The Vindija DNA gives us a profile of Neanderthals who were uniquely adapted to the diverse landscapes of Central Europe, from dense forests to cold, open valleys. If Thorin's ancestors migrated from Croatia to what is now southern France, their journey would likely have followed coastal and lowland routes that Ice Age sea levels made accessible. Lowered sea levels during glacial periods exposed coastlines and land bridges, opening a path from Croatia to Italy and then into France. Grotta Mandrin, located in the Rhone Valley of southeastern France, is one of the few known sites in this region with evidence of Neanderthal habitation. Thorin's people, upon reaching this area, found shelter in this cave. Grotta Mandrin's strategic position, close to fresh water and food sources, made it an ideal cave site. Genetically, Thorin and the Vindija Neanderthals occupy an important position between more archaic Neanderthal populations in Eastern Europe and Siberia and the Western European Neanderthals found in France, Belgium and Spain. The Vindija Neanderthals display some genetic continuity with Eastern populations, like the Altai Neanderthals in Siberia, while also sharing characteristics with Western Neanderthals. This suggests that Vindija Neanderthals were part of a bridge population that retained older Neanderthal features, but also had intermittent gene flow with groups further west. The Vindija DNA analysis reveals that this population had a somewhat diverse gene pool, despite their isolation. The genetic variation found at Vindija indicates a mix of ancient genes passed down through generations and occasional inputs from other Neanderthal populations, likely through sporadic migration and interbreeding events. The Vindija Neanderthals display unique genetic traits, some of which may have been shared with Thorin's population. For instance, certain adaptations related to cold tolerance, metabolic efficiency, and immune function stand out in Vindija genomes. These traits reflect an evolutionary history shaped by the challenges of Ice Age Europe, where temperatures fluctuated significantly and survival required physical resilience and dietary flexibility. The Vindija DNA also reveals clues about Neanderthal physiology. Genes related to muscle development and robust bone structure are particularly well preserved in Vindija samples, highlighting the physical strength that allowed Neanderthals to hunt large Ice Age animals like mammoths, bison and reindeer. This powerful build was a Neanderthal hallmark, especially where tough terrain and climatic variability required strength and endurance. Studies show that many modern humans carry small portions of DNA that closely match sequences found in the Vindija Neanderthals. These shared sequences include genes associated with immune responses, which likely conferred advantages to Homo sapiens as they adapted to new environments in Eurasia. 
However, as isolation intensified and Neanderthal populations thinned, Vindiger and its surrounding areas would have become genetic strongholds, carrying a lineage that preserved both archaic traits and adaptations for European environments. Thorin's connection to Vindiger suggests that his lineage might have contributed to these early interbreeding events, albeit indirectly. While Thorin himself predates extensive Homo sapiens contact, his descendants or related Neanderthals could have eventually interbred with migrating modern humans, passing down Vindiger-associated genes that are still present in humans today. Therefore, you may be related to Thorin. However, anthropologist Ludovic Slimak, who has studied Neanderthal sites including Grotto Mandarin, suggests that Neanderthals went extinct not simply due to competition over resources, but because they failed to form alliances with the more efficient Homo sapiens. Modern humans, according to Slimak, were remarkable not only for their adaptability, but for their social cohesion and ability to organize large groups, traits that gave them an edge over the more isolated Neanderthals. Slimak's observations align with genetic evidence suggesting that Thorin's people, like many Neanderthal groups, experienced long periods of isolation with minimal contact even with other Neanderthal populations. This genetic and social isolation limited the diversity and adaptability of Neanderthal groups, especially in comparison to Homo sapiens, whose flexible social structures and communication skills made them more adaptable. Modern humans possessed advanced tools, communication methods and social strategies that allowed them to exploit resources more efficiently and adapt quickly to environmental shifts. As Slimak notes, this efficiency created a vast difference in survival strategies. Where Neanderthals relied on their close-knit groups and well-honed physical abilities, Homo sapiens employed innovation, symbolic communication and social organization. Meanwhile, Thorin's group represents a final branch of Neanderthals who lived through Europe's harshest climates, migrating, adapting and surviving despite their genetic isolation. Their journey from Croatia to France reflects the resilience of a people who managed to survive, even thrive, in a landscape where nature itself seemed to turn against them. But with the arrival of modern humans, they encountered a challenge for which their isolation left them ill-prepared. Their archaic morphology, once advantageous, became less adaptable as Homo sapiens spread across Europe. Slimak's remarks on failed alliances highlight the social and cultural chasm between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, which proved just as critical as any physical advantage. The Neanderthals' isolated, smaller social groups could not compete with the larger, more interconnected Homo sapiens networks that brought new technologies, ideas and cultural practices. In the ever-evolving field of human evolutionary genetics, Thorin's DNA reveals much about the diversity and adaptability of Neanderthals and their lasting impact on modern humans. By studying Thorin and his isolated lineage, Researchers not only unlock new knowledge about our distant cousins, but also deepen our understanding of the complex web of human ancestry, connecting us to a past where separation, adaptation, and eventual convergence shaped who we are today. In the end, Thorin's lineage and the legacy of his people faded into history. Yet their genes live on, carried in traces within many modern human genomes. We may never fully understand the Neanderthal's complex world, but with each new discovery, the story of Thorin and his people enriches our understanding of survival, resilience, and the inexorable march of time in the evolution of humanity. Thank you for watching the video, and please let us know what you think in the comments. Before you go, please check out our other videos on human evolution.